It's been six months since I reviewed this UEIUA CPY2410 MPPT solar charge controller. And in that review I found it was doing MPPT and I was quite impressed with it. The only slight little niggle I had was perhaps the uh, battery was being charged a little bit high, especially for the gel acid battery that I had connected to it. However, as I said, six months later, I have been using this every day since on a small gel battery and a 50 watt solar panel. And after six months of use, I've got no issues to report. This has been working flawlessly here in the solar shed. However, sadly, a number of people commenting on that review of this solar charge controller haven't had the same experience. No, a number of people have suggested when they received this solar charge controller, it performed in a different manner entirely and perhaps even wasn't MPPT. In the original review of the CPY2410, I did mention I had had my fingers burnt before by UEIUA products. This particular one was sold to me as a PWM solar charge controller and when I actually tested it and used it, I found it wasn't. It was a switching solar charge controller. Uh, still of some use, but not exactly as sold. Now a YouTube user going by the name of Time Machine 194 sent me this image of the inside of their CPY2410 solar charge controller and it is definitely different to the one that I showed in my video. In fact if I open up the case here, which I've already taken the screws out of, quite clearly mine only has one inductor whereas this one has two and I was assured that this is the 10 amp version equivalent but quite clearly here you can see I've got two electrolytic capacitors here and there's three in this image. So as you can clearly see there are major differences in what are meant to be two identical solar charge controllers. Now buying another CPY2410 uh, seemed to be a bit of a risk. Who knows what I will get inside, whether it's this version of the PCB or that other one we just saw. Now while searching around eBay I found another version from UEIUA, uh, the CPS2410, and the specs were absolutely identical to this CPY2410. In fact when I dug out the manual for the CPY2410, look, it does actually mention the CPS uh, version there as well. So uh, the manual is absolutely identical for both of them. So I thought it made more sense to uh, buy the CPS2410 solar, I've just noticed, charge controller. And inside the box, obviously, is the charge control itself. And that same manual. So uh, let's get this unboxed and unwrapped. So the first impression I get is this is considerably heavier than the CPY. It's definitely got a bigger heatsink there on the bottom. It's a bit chunkier. Whether that accounts for all the weight, well, we'll wait and see. Obviously, it's got different uh, connectors here and uh, the USB slot has moved from the middle, but you can just see that there is a slightly lighter piece of the sticker there. So perhaps there is a hole behind there and actually the USB slot has moved to the bottom, which perhaps is more practical. However, these LEDs and the temperature sensor seem to be in exactly the same configuration as the uh, CPY version. So let's take the back off here and see what's inside. So here we have it, and when we remove the case, I'll place that up there so we can see the uh, different versions at the top. Clearly, this one looks very similar to the uh, unit that uh, Time Machine 194 sent me a picture of. The two inductors, the three electrolytic uh, capacitors up here. I don't remember whether his picture had an electrolytic there, though. The USB port is an option here on the uh, board in the center there but actually they've moved it down here the um, terminal blocks well presumably 
they're of the same pitch and yes if I put one on top of the other there you can clearly see that the pitch of those terminals is exactly the same so presumably this module can be swapped out from one to the other um, as I mentioned the heat sinks are of very different size though the one on the right the CPS is much more heavy duty than the CPY 2410's heatsink on the left but quite clearly they are very different inside although they've been produced and delivered with exactly the same manual for both of these units and uh, clearly it looks like these have been interchanged at some point in fact yes that PCB is exactly the same width and the same height um, so it looks like they may be totally interchangeable now one of the things that shouts out that this is very much a very different product is the fact that the original CPY 2410 that I purchased came with a microchip microcontroller Whereas the new version that came with the CPS 2410 uses this Nouveau Ton microcontroller. Now here are both units. Both used five machine screws to hold the PCB down to the heatsink. And this is the, my original CPY 2410. And on the back of the board it does mention CPY version 1.3. And then it's dated 10th of August 2016. Or is that the 8th of October 2016? Well, I guess that depends on whether you're using the American dating system or the one that everybody else uses. And on the right-hand side, the one that's coming in the CPS uh, 2410 actually says straight away there the UEIUA CPY and CPS big version 2.3 and this has a date here of the 6th of January 2017 or is that the 1st of July 2017 so clearly this board here is now being shipped inside both these units so I suspect actually we could uh, possibly bolt this one onto this smaller heatsink perhaps um, yes I think those screws line up just fine so i'm afraid to say this proves that although i can do an honest review on a product and quite like it the manufacturers can change the internals entirely and render my review useless so unfortunately it does seem to be a case of buyer beware so with that all said i think it's time to plug in the cps 2410 into a battery and a solar panel and we'll see how well it fares Okay, so we've got the uh, CPS 2410 plugged in now to a lead acid battery, which is fairly well undercharged, just 12.4 volts here on the battery side. We are seeing some voltage here on the solar side, interestingly enough. This port power on the left will measure the solar panel input, and the port power on the right will show the energy going in and out of the battery. So it's worth mentioning here we've got 51 milliamps going into this charge controller just for its operation 50 milliamps is the quiescent current and if i plug in i've got two 50 watt monocrystalline panels in series which i've now plugged in and uh, we can see the open voltage there was about 40 volts and uh, we can see that it's measuring that there is some solar we've got 13 watts coming in 10 watts going into the battery by the looks of it um, that's dropping quite rapidly as the voltage on the solar panels is also dropping quite rapidly so we're down to 22 volts 21 volts now on the solar panel um, and therefore the power is also dropping what a shame this has dropped now to well somewhere close to half the maximum power point uh, these panels will not be producing 
as much as they possibly could down at this sort of level 16 volts um, but we've still got 5 watts going into that battery the battery um, voltage is raising up slowly here 12.59 volts um, but 15 volts now on the input not so much maximum power point tracking as well look at that this is almost PWM, 15 volts on the input, 12.6 on the output. That's pretty poor. Now I am wondering if the CPS 2410 is struggling with such low power coming in. However, it should never really let the uh, panels drop down to that level. But uh, the battery is still at 12.4 and I've now swapped for two 100 watt monocrystalline panels coming in so 200 watts uh, those panels are in series let's plug that in there uh, 41.7 volts on those panels and the uh, power coming in is rising reasonably quickly up to 15 watts now and 13 watts going into the battery 40 volts on the input and 12.9 there, just coming up to 13 on the output. So this does seem to be doing the DC to DC conversion and uh, 3 amps there going into the battery. Uh, 56 watts coming in, 53, 52 going into the battery. So actually this seems to be working much better than I expected. So I've been watching this for a little bit and uh, it's clearly regulating the battery here at 13.5 volts. 17 and a bit volts coming in on the solar, 36 watts coming in, 33 watts going into the battery. So we're losing a little bit less than 10% aren't we in the conversion. Now as it's trying to regulate this battery it's not unusual for it to take the uh, panels away from their maximum power point. This does seem an awfully long way away from it, but it will need to reduce the power coming in from the solar panels to make sure it doesn't overcharge the battery. And the only thing I've got to combat that is a lamp that I can put directly across the battery. So if I uh, plug that in, that's a 21 watt uh, 12 volt lamp. And we can see now that the battery voltage has dipped 13.22 volts and uh, so has the panel voltage 16.7. So there does seem to be a reasonably direct correlation between those voltages as if this is doing PWM at a 100% duty cycle. And as we watch and wait, although the battery voltage is still decreasing here, 13.1 volts, and dropping slowly, the uh, charge controller hasn't made any adjustment and we're still seeing the same voltage and current coming in, the 34 watts coming in there with 31 and a half ish going into the battery and into that lamp. So with that load attached to the battery for a little while now, um, 13 volts, we've just dipped under 13 volts there now on the battery, so the battery voltage is actually dropping, and it seems like the CPS 2410 is not adjusting the uh, input here, the solar input, to raise the voltage and increase the power. Sadly, it doesn't seem to be doing maximum power point tracking and it's not able to adjust itself um, once that battery level starts reducing it doesn't seem to sort of kick back into a full charge mode which is a real shame because i was starting to think that the tales of woe about this particular pcb might have been incorrect but clearly this doesn't work like it's meant to so it's such a shame. I used to like the CPY 2410, uh, but I can no longer really recommend it. It's true to say I still like this CPY 2410, but you just can't guarantee that you're going to get the same PCB inside here if you buy one from an eBay seller today. The replacement PCB with that new microcontroller just doesn't seem to do maximum PowerPoint tracking very well at all, if at all. 
So unfortunately I can't really recommend either of these products anymore and uh, that's a shame because they are very cheap but it turns out they seem to be cheap for a reason. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, if you have give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.